All right, so now uh, we're, we're finally done with the uh, nitrogen uh, reaction for the time being, and let's look at this reaction. dissolving carbon dioxide in liquid. We're dissolving carbon dioxide in liquid. Carbon dioxide dissolves in water um, to form carbonic acid. This is pretty important, say, uh, I think in, uh, in biology and physiology uh, in relating to carbon dioxide transport um, through the blood. So the carbon dioxide uh, can dissolve in the blood because the blood really is just water. Um, and remember, there's a, a carbon dioxide buffer um, that's created using this acid. We don't need to get into those details. That's one way that carbon dioxide is transferred. Um, also though, for example, this is how you make a carbonated beverage, by dissolving carbon dioxide in the liquid of the soda, which is uh, water with other stuff in it. Okay, and now they ask us to consider what happens if we open the bottle. So we're considering carbonated water or carbonated soda, and we open the bottle. Yeah, in a sense, that's right. Okay, so if we thought of this as increasing the volume, dissolving the carbon dioxide in water. So this is dissolved carbonic acid in water. So do we still think it's going to shift in reverse? Yeah. Yes or no? Yes? Because again, all that matters is counting the moles of gas. Well, there's zero moles of gas on the right and one mole of gas on the left. So we should be shifting into reverse to get uh, more moles of gas to use this extra room that we have. So we're going to shift into reverse. What were you going to say before he said that about the volume? Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. There might be another way to think about this. So is the carbon dioxide going, uh, are we going to have more or less carbon dioxide in solution? So is the beverage going to get more or less carbonated? That's exactly right. This is why soda cans are kept sealed, right? To have a constant pressure and volume. And you know, once you open the soda can, the clock is on, right? You gotta drink it in the next three hours or it really isn't much, much fun anymore. Well, this is the explanation for why that's happening. Once you open the can, that encourages this reaction to shift to the left. So the carbon dioxide bubbles out of solution. And once it's a gas, it just bubbles out and escapes and it's gone. Uh, all right, so then we're going to have less carbon dioxide in the solution. Okay, so this is a nice little example they came up with that you might see on some of the passages on the test uh, as well uh, for Le Chatelet's principle. And um, let's see. Okay, now another way to think about this, instead of thinking about it in terms of volume, to, the other way I was going to think about this is, um, so while the can is sealed, some of the carbon dioxide will be get in gaseous form and some will be dissolved. That is, there'll be little bubbles inside, right? But they can't escape because it's sealed. So there'll be little bubbles that are constantly dissolving and then turning back into little bubbles again. But what happens when you open the can? Well, when you open the can, the bubbles rise to the top and then they leave the liquid and then they're gone. They escape. So over time, once you open the can, what's going to happen to the concentration of carbon dioxide? because it's bubbling out and escaping. And what would Le Chatelet say that that would do to the equation? Which produces, e takes even more carbon dioxide out of solution, which shifts it even further. 
further into reverse, which means that um, there's even more carbon dioxide out of the solution, which bubbles out again, so we shift even more in reverse. So this is a chain reaction in this case. It's not just a one-time deal. So that, um, actually, this is the way that the answer is actually thought about it, the way that you were thinking about it. But it might be better to think about it like this, because this makes it seem like there's just going to be a one-time shift. But actually, we know that eventually all the carbon dioxide is gone. It gets completely flat. And the reason is that the carbon dioxide is being not just um, is, being, is actually escaping from the reaction. Once it, um, uh, if this can is sealed, it can turn into gas and, then go and dissolve later. But once the can is open, any time it turns into gas, it's going to bubble away. And that's going to shift us even further to the left. So this is maybe an even better way to think about why it's going to go flat over time. Then it's also maybe more relevant for practical situations again. As we were saying, the real way to really affect a reaction is to be adding or removing some of the reagents. If we're permanently removing one of the reagents, uh, if we're constantly removing one of the reagents, that's constantly coaxing the equation to move back and try to replace that. Um, we talked about how constantly removing the product causes the reaction to constantly produce more product. Well, constantly removing this um, left-hand species constantly moves the reaction towards the left. Um, let's briefly review the concept of pH. So as you remember, how do you calculate pH? Negative one. Of? Yeah. So if there's more hydronium, does that increase or decrease the pH? Yeah, that's right. Because of the negative sign here. This negative sign means that if we have more hydronium, we have a smaller negative log. Which means a smaller pH. There's an inverse relationship between H and pH. Also, um, we were talking today about K. Now, you guys might have heard of other Ks like uh, KW or KA or KB or KSP. So I just want to point out all of those are just the particular equilibrium constants for special reactions. For example, KW is the equilibrium constant for the water autoionization reaction. And the KSP is the equilibrium constant for a dissolution reaction, a dissolving reaction. And the Ka is the equilibrium constant for an acid ionization reaction. And the Kb of a particular base is the equilibrium constant for that base's base ionization reaction. So these are all just special equilibrium constants. We don't have time to talk about each of them today, but one reason why we wanted to really focus on K is because unless you understand general K, you can't understand all those applications of K. Um, 